a woman may be thin, have no abnormal hair growth at all, yet still qualify for the diagnosis of PCOS. My name is George Kovalevsky, and I am a reproductive endocrinologist and infertility specialist at the Delaware Institute for Reproductive Medicine. PCOS stands for polycystic ovarian syndrome. It's a syndrome, meaning there's not one thing that causes it or one test that we can do to identify it. So rather, PCOS is a hormonal imbalance that's characterized by several things, several aspects, like having elevated male-type hormones, androgens, or not ovulating on a regular basis. Women with PCOS uh, tend to not have regular periods. The bleeding may be completely irregular or not happen at all. Uh, they may have irregular hair gro growth. So women uh, often have hair growing in areas that women don't normally have, like on the chin, sideburns, breasts, abdomen. Um, some women have elevated uh, resistance to insulin, so that means they're prone to developing diabetes. There are several misconceptions about PCOS. One of them is that there is a standard stereotype that a woman with PCOS is always obese, uh, very overweight, and always pursuit lots of abnormal hair growth. While that is a classic type of PCOS, there are many others as well. So a woman may be thin, have no abnormal hair growth at all, yet still qualify for the diagnosis of PCOS. PCOS has a familial predisposition. So it means that if your mother uh, has PCOS, you may be more likely to develop it, but it's really a multifactorial uh, etiology, meaning genetics play some role, but mostly it's other factors that we really don't completely know or can identify. Uh, so there's not one thing that we know that causes PCOS. There are probably many roads that lead to this hormonal imbalance that we call PCOS. And since we don't know the cause, we don't have a cure either. The single most important thing for many women is lifestyle changes. Uh, interventions such as changes in diet, exercising, being more active, weight management can be extremely powerful in addressing a lot of these issues. Beyond that, once a diagnosis of PCOS is made, an important question to first resolve is, is the individual trying to achieve a pregnancy or not? If someone's trying to achieve a pregnancy, then the treatment is mostly revolving around ovulation induction, helping the individual ovulate, release an egg so pregnancy can occur. On the other hand, if the answer is no, pregnancy is not desired, then it's more managing the other aspects of PCOS, such as uh, health, uh, pr health preventative measures, reducing risk of developing diseases like diabetes and uterine cancer, managing the side effects like the abnormal hair growth, hirsutism. Uh, so with that, treatments usually uh, consist of some variation of birth control pills or hormonal management that's similar to that, um, as well as progestin to reduce the risk of endometrial cancer, uh, and of course the lifestyle changes that we talked about already.